Okay, so in today's video, I'm going to be talking about how you can improve your tennis despite being injured. So to be completely honest, I never actually wanted to make this video. The video was kind of forced upon me because I actually got injured myself. So if you've watched my videos already, you'll know that I'm returning to tennis after having a heart problem. And I've played a couple of tournaments. I did a couple UK grade four tournaments. The last one I did a grade three where I made the semi-finals. And then I actually played another grade three, which was really good for me. I got a good result. I won that tournament. Unfortunately, the footage I took wasn't too great. It wasn't good enough to make a full video out of that. I actually already plan to do another grade three tournament before I jump back into the national British tour tournaments which is kind of the level that I was at before I had my heart problem. So in the next grade three tournament I arrived at the venue and it was really raining. The courts were like astro. I didn't think they were going to play the matches. I thought it was going to be cancelled for the day but the rain stopped. The courts dried up a little bit but it's still pretty slippy. Unfortunately I slipped over, slid it into the ball. I just carried on sliding. I didn't stop. Hit the fence and then ended up falling down with my arms outstretched and like I had my, my racket in my hand. So then when I hit the ground, it was kind of like racket hand first, like here. And then I fell with like my left hand and then all the pressure went up my wrist into the hand that I was holding my racket with. Instantly I knew it wasn't, wasn't good. I had, had to retire from the match. I couldn't move it. It was like so painful. I thought I did some pretty bad damage. I went to A&E. I got an x-ray and they said to treat it as a fracture and so they put, put it in a splint for a couple of weeks. I had to have another x-ray to confirm whether it was a fracture or not. Luckily it wasn't a fracture. I could just treat it like normal ligament sprain and recover from that. I think it was about four or five weeks where I actually couldn't play any tournaments. I hardly played at all. It was quite demoralizing because I just had my return to tennis, started playing well, won a tournament and then essentially fractured, sprained my wrist, whatever, and meant that I was out again. So in this video, I'm gonna assume that you've got a, kind of like a diagnosis and like a treatment plan from the physio or doctor or whoever you saw to help treat your injury. First really important thing is to keep structure in your program. So it's quite easy to go from training hard, having like your schedule, doing your fitness, doing your tennis. When you get injured, obviously you're told to rest and then it's quite easy just to do absolutely nothing not think about tennis, kind of just get sad that you're not playing. It's a big jump from the mentality of going from training to training to tournaments again. So if you can keep that structure in your training, even if you're injured throughout that time, when you get back into it again, you'll be able to like snap back into it again, back into the match mentality and training mentality that you had before. So there's kind of like four different areas in tennis in general that you're always trying to improve, whether you're injured or whether you're not injured. And those are tactical, technical, physical and mental. So I'm gonna be talking about those four different themes and how you can carry on improving them. First with physical, the most obvious thing is do whatever you can to help the injury recover, whether it be exercises from the doctor, icing, doing rehab exercises, make a plan of when you wanna do them and make sure you do do them. Sometimes you're gonna to be told that you have to rest completely and there's nothing that you can do on the affected area that's gonna make it better. So you have to ask the physio or doctor, what can I do physically that isn't going to hinder the recovery of the injury? So for me, with my wrist injury, I could do a lot of lower body strength exercises and I could do running, um, conditioning, anything that can improve my endurance. For me, that worked well because I lost a lot of that from when I had the time out because of my heart problem. So I spent those five weeks essentially doing like a little strength and endurance block. So when I could come back to competitions, I was fit and I was ready to compete for long matches. Have a look on the physical side of things of where you're lacking a little bit see if it matches up with things that you can do and just create a little block where you wouldn't normally have the time to do that sort of stuff and really spend that time on it because you're not going to have any tournaments for a while anyway so the next thing is the technical side of tennis some injuries you can still hit quite a lot of shots so like when i had a wrist injury previously i could still hit backhands i could hit backhand volleys i could hit slice so i could focus on those areas with this wrist injury this time Literally, I couldn't hit any type of ball with, with it. So the only thing I could do was literally play left-handed, which is fine because it means that I could improve my two-handed backhand when I came back to it. So the main point here to take away is like with the physical side of things, work out what you can do on the court and what you can't do on the court. It's really important to note that you shouldn't spend the same amount of time as you would throughout the whole session when you weren't injured on the things that you can do when you are injured. That means don't spend one hour hitting slice backhands or don't spend one hour playing completely left-handed because that's not normal and then you're putting yourself at risk for further injury you don't want to spike and load on things that you don't normally do so instead maybe combine it with other things so maybe spend like a little bit of time on your back and slice and then do a little bit of physical footwork sort of stuff just make sure you don't overload certain areas in a way that you're not used to and then you're going to get injured in different areas of your body so on the physical side of things and the technical side of your tennis 
depending on your injury, you're going to have either have a lot of things to do or not so much, but either way, it's good to put structure with it and plan out your day with that. If there's not much there that you can do with the technical and physical side of things, then you need to shift your focus more towards the tactical and mental side. So being injured is actually a really good way to work on your mental side. 99% of players aren't putting dedicated time in to work on things like visualization or breathing techniques or those type of stuff. You normally try and incorporate it into your tennis sessions and it never really gets the focus that it really deserves. I've done the previous video on how you can improve the mental side of your tennis, so make sure you watch that. But I also put a little Instagram reel up where I showed a book that has a really great structure to improving the mental side of um, any sport, actually. It's called 10 Minute Toughness, and it gives you a little routine that you can follow every day. Basically, it really just goes over visualization and breathing techniques. And if you can plan out at least 10 minutes when you're injured, maybe even more, maybe do like three 10 minute sections each day of working on these three different things, then when you get back on the court and when you play matches, you're going to find that you transition into tournaments a lot easier. Normally when you're injured and you come back, it takes a lot of match practice and it takes a lot of tournaments to find your flow with it. Even if you can play 100% again, you're not going to feel comfortable in the match. But if you're doing these visualizations and you're doing these breathing techniques, it's not going to feel like you've been away from the court for as long because in your mind, you've been practicing it. You've been seeing yourself playing. You've been doing things that you're in your head that you were doing before. The transition to match play is going to be a lot smoother than it was before. Another way that you can really improve the mental side and put significant time into it during this injured period is using an app like Headspace or Calm. Um, I quite liked Headspace because it had a specific section for sport. If you struggle to do visualization in your own head on your own, they give you like guided visualizations that you can do. And they even have a whole core section recovering from an injury. And it gives you practice of staying in the present. And as I said before, if you watched my previous video, you can see how important staying in the present is. But there's a video of Djokovic talking about how important staying in the present is. It's not about how long you can be in the present for, it's how good are you at losing your grasp of the present moment and coming back into the present moment. Doing headspace or visualization or breathing techniques are ways to bring you back into the present moment and you're actually practicing that. Out of all the different ways that you can improve your tennis off the court and whilst you're injured, spending a big amount of time on the mental side of the thing, whatever way works best for you is going to be the most important because if you can come back to a match and you're better at bringing yourself into the present moment after you get distracted, you're going to play way better. And the time that you've lost from not playing tennis is going to be cancelled out by this time that you spend on bringing yourself back to the present moment. And you're going to end up playing better in matches in the long run. So the final way that you can improve your game off the court when you're injured is through that tactical side of things. If you film your matches or you film your training, then you can go back through that can watch, watch yourself play, pick up on things, maybe match chart your own matches, see different ways that you can improve. But if you haven't got that data to look at, what you can do is just watch any tennis matches. There's tons of full matches on YouTube that you can go and watch and you can do match charting for yourself on those matches. You can watch different things in the players, see how they react to losing points, look at how much time they take between points, see the routines on their serve. Just pick up things from professional tennis players, spend time watching tennis that you don't normally watch because you're so busy. And it's important when you're watching players is to kind of watch players who have a similar game style for you. So for me, I'm a quite a small tennis player who stays at the back quite a lot. So I'll be watching players like David Ferrer or um, Nishikori or those type of players. Get some statistics from those players, match chart their matches and see how they beat players with different game styles. Imagine after that time where you've been injured and you have the whole set of data of players that are similar to you and you've got statistics from those players um, that you can compare to yourself when you get back because no one has time to do all that statistics when they're training all the time, traveling to tournaments, doing everything else that you do in your daily life. But in that time where you don't have as much time on court, you can spend that time gathering statistics. You actually have some tangible evidence of what you need to do better and where you're lacking compared to that high level of your own game style. So I've actually played quite a few tournaments since this wrist injury now. So the next few videos are gonna be more tournament vlog based stuff of um, those matches. I'm gonna be doing some match analysis on them and showing you the matches that I've played first one back is a national British tour tournament. So thanks for sticking around and I will see you in the next video.